Hi guys, Sean here for Trek Culture, and before Star Trek Prodigy drops and Captain Janeway is leading a group of kids out into the unknown, we're here to hold this potentially great Starfleet captain to task as we look through the 10 worst things Captain Janeway has ever done. Number 10, stranding Voyager in the Delta Quadrant, Caretaker. Now, let us consider for a moment that it is by no means Captain Janeway's fault that the Voyager was dragged from the Alpha Quadrant all the way across to the Delta Quadrant by the Caretaker. Clearly, not on her. Not on her at all. The events of the season opener show us her struggling to deal with this new scenario, safeguard the crew under her command, and attempt to put the two crews, Maquis and Starfleet, together as much as possible for a pilot episode, while also meeting new aliens and all the fun that goes along with that. Therein lies an issue. She meets the Ocampa, who are being threatened by the Kazon, and she decides that rather then allow the technology of the caretaker to fall into the hands of the Kazon, which could threaten the Ocampa, she does strand her crew in the Delta Quadrant for, we're looking at about 75 years before they will make it back to Starfleet space. Would have been nice if there was maybe a vote or something. Number nine, picking Torres over Lieutenant Carey, Parallax. In the very next episode, Janeway again uses some questionable judgment that leaves one of her crew fairly out in the cold. Lieutenant Joe Carey came as part of the Starfleet crew along with the rest of Voyager when it was dragged into the Delta Quadrant. And upon the death of the chief engineer, he was next in line for the job in terms of both experience and seniority. Along comes Balana Torres. She, on the way to getting to know Janeway really well, breaks Carey's nose, which is probably not something you're supposed to do to your crewmates, and it's openly, you know, mutinous when Chakotay's even going, you know, could you possibly chill the F out here, Torres? In a move that can be likened to making handshake deals on the golf course, she goes along with Janeway in a shuttle, becomes Bezzy mates, and is welcomed back on board the ship as the chief engineer. Lieutenant Carey is then effectively forgotten until he's brought back in the final season to serve the role of Red Shirt on the fateful Friendship One mission. Number eight, instigating a civil war, Death Wish. The problem with Captain Janeway is so many of her most devastating decisions seem to come from a place of niceness. Such is true of this next one where she gives Quinn, the Q who has been confined to existence in a comet, the right to a fair hearing to become a member of her crew. Though wildly unqualified to make this kind of a call, she allows the arguments to be said on either side between Quinn and Q, the right to life and right to death of the Q continuum. This is seen as, you know, safeguarding maybe one member of one alien race. But what it actually leads to is the complete dissolution of the Q continuum and a massive civil war that leads to many supernovas throughout the galaxy. You know, if she had just taken Q's warning in this case, then maybe fewer supernovas. Just like, like supernovas are bad, you know? Number seven, Tuvix. Tuvix, very, very sad thing happens. Neelix and Tuvok are smushed into one being called Tuvix. Oh dear, that's a bad thing. Now, while some people might look at this and go, we were blessedly free of Neelix. I like Neelix, I like Neelix. Others have looked at this and gone, look, Janeway made the right call. Needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. She elects to go through the procedure that will split Tuvix back into two beings, Tuvok and Neelix therefore saving their lives, but directly ending Tuvix's life. As was shown in the autobiography of Catherine Janeway that was released last year, which was ghostwritten, of course, by Dr. Una McCormick, this stayed on Janeway's mind for years to come because she did effectively use the transporter as her own personal execution tool in this event. The doctor himself refuses to go through with the procedure because he has given the oath, do no harm. Janeway laughs at this and hits the button, and she gets her busy mate Tuvok back and everybody's happy. Except, of course, Tuvix. 
who nobody seems to give a crap about after this episode. Number six, making a deal with the devil, Scorpion. Ever since TNG's second season episode, Q Who, we've known the Borg are, they're kind of bad news, really. Then this was only accentuated in the events of Best of Both Worlds and, you know, they haven't really done much to save face since then. The events of Star Trek First Contact then came around just before the time of Scorpion. So we as an audience knew that, listen, the Borg are bad guys. They're bad news. Let's not be friends with them. Janeway took the memo and she chucked it at the airlock. When the crew entered Borg space, they thought for a second, great, there's a passage all the way through that's going to keep us safe. Not so. It was being populated by Species 8472, which were fighting back against the Borg, who had Borged their way into fluidic space. Now, whether Janeway was aware of that or not, what she saw was an alien race beating the Borg, and then she saw an opportunity. She goes to the Borg and says, let's be friends and we'll take out those gits for you. She didn't exactly do an awful lot of research into the context of what the conflict was about. She just got the message from Tuvok and Kess that, you know, Species 8472 were bad news. Wasn't an awful lot of attempt at communication going on there. Nope, she just kind of went, well, better the devil you know. Not so. Not so. As was proved in the events of Hope and Fear later in the season, the war between 8472 and the Borg was having a positive effect on many races in the Delta Quadrant. It was holding the Borg at bay. Janeway thought, na 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 na, my little mini collective is way more important than everyone else. This is something we will return to on this list. She says, you know what, screw 8472, here's some modified nanoprobes, whoops, you betrayed me, nobody saw that coming. Number five, shutting herself away, night. In the season five opener, night, Voyager enters a period of space which is completely devoid of any stellar bodies, stars, dust, planets, nothing. It is in fact just a big black void. And this gives the crew sort of an unofficial sure leave, even if it's a bit of a grim one. Janeway takes this time rather than say, you know, get to know some of the crew or, you know, maybe take up a new hobby. She shuts herself completely away and leaves the running of the ship to Chakotay. Okay, look, there were worse things in the world. She then begins to second guess every decision she's ever made, which I'm not in fairness saying is a massively bad thing in the context of this list. She then does come to the terms of like, ooh, Oh, maybe I should have thought things through a little bit more with the whole Akampakazan situation there. Whoops, my bad. This leads to a fairly wishy-washy captain. Now, Chakotay kind of sees what's on the cards here, and he has a chat with Tuvok. Tuvok has known Captain Janeway a lot longer than anybody else on the ship, and he's able to kind of see, yeah, she's probably going to do a legger now in a while. Now, he phrases it much more Vulcan than that, but Chakotay, warned, is prepared for when Janeway says, I'm going to do a legger. Uses in the context of, you know, maybe she'll try and defeat the Malon or something like that. But really, it just kind of comes across like she's kind of done with Voyager. And, you know, she's going to hop on a shuttle and say, ah, Joe, I'll stay in this void. Not cool. Not cool. Thankfully, or potentially not for the rest of this list, she is coerced into staying on board the ship. And number four, checking on her lower decks so infrequently she needs directions. Good Shepherd. Now, in the late sixth season episode, Good Shepherd, Seven of Nine does a, you know, a crew evaluation in which she turns up three crewmen who are not working to peak efficiency. Well, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. So Janeway comes up with the idea of, hey, I know, let's let's go and get to know these crew members. Let's let's see if we can't do anything to help them. Six years into their mission, Captain Janeway hops in a turbo lift and she goes down all the way down miles and miles and miles away from the bridge to deck 15. She then steps out of the turbo lift and, you know, she's kind of looking around going like, oh my God, did we build this recently? Where, where am I? She stops to ask Tom Morello for directions. He's able to say, go that way. She's like, oh, thanks for, <laughs> I knew that. I was just testing you. Mm. Compare her to a certain bald headed Frenchman who by his sixth year aboard his much larger galaxy class vessel was able to identify which subsection of Jeffrey's tube he was in 
just by glancing at the walls after Neela Darren asked him. I'm not saying it's a contest, but I'm also saying it's a contest, and Picard's winning this one. Number three, hunting the Equinox. Equinox. The Equinox and Voyager were both pulled into the Delta Quadrant by the caretaker. Okie dokie. Voyager then elected to remain very tightly within the Prime Directive and, you know, get home under its own steam. The much smaller Nova class USS Equinox, now they effectively abandoned morality because they came under huge amounts of stress. They were attacked by the Cretonan Guard. They lost half their crew. They were in a pretty dire situation. When Voyager encounters Equinox, they're under attack by the nucleogenic life forms who have, they have been effectively harvesting for fuel. You know, it's bad. You know, they shouldn't have done that. That would be bold. You know, and Janeway, she's she's pretty she's pretty pissed off when she discovers this, and yeah, but that's not the reason she hunts down the Equinox. She becomes completely obsessed, and I do mean obsessed with catching up to the Equinox to the point where she and Chakotay effectively come to blows over this. All she can see is that Captain Rudy Ransom of the Equinox broke his word as a Starfleet captain. And she's saying, no, uh, 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 not on my watch, you dick. It's very bad that they harvested nucleogenic life forms for fuel. From Janeway's point of view is you and me have four pips. You did something I don't like. I'm going to hunt you down only by the fact that Rudy Ransom is going to sacrifice himself to save Voyager and the rest of his crew from these nucleogenic life forms, that's the only moment her bloodlust lets up for this guy. You know, she knows he's a dead man, and it's the only way she'll call off the uh, call off the hunt. You know, quite frankly, I'm I'm pretty glad she's not coming after me. I'm really hoping she doesn't see this list. Number two, altering history because she doesn't really like it. End game. What right did Admiral Janeway have to change the previous decade or so of history by the events of Endgame? I would argue none. She loses several members of her crew on the way home from the Delta Quadrant, and that weighs on her quite heavily, and yet that's totally understandable. However, she gets it into her head that if she can change the timeline, she can bring everybody back, no questions asked, everybody's happy. Well, well, what about the several trillion lives that will be altered by these events? Think to the episode Timeless, when Captain LaForge of the USS Challenger catches up to former Commander Chakotay, who's attempting to do something similar. He says, look, I understand your motivations. You've lost your friends, mate. But I have to safeguard history. You can't do this. And Captain Harry Kim of the Rhode Island then rocks up to Janeway and is kind of like, you kind of can't do this. Janeway once again uses her powers of persuasion to get Harry Kim to let her go and do whatever it is the heck that she wants. And she goes back and changes history. You know, she brings some people back from the dead. Yay, that's great. She deals a crippling bro to the Borg. Yay, that's great. But there's no way to quantify the changes she made in the timeline simply by doing that because, quite frankly, she wasn't really satisfied with how things rolled out. I'll just change them. Number one, never promoting Harry Kim the entire series. Harry Kim has become known in fandom as the Forever Ensign because he and his solitary Pip never advanced in rank from the first episode to the last. Now put, a, now put a little asterisk on that now for a second, which I will come to. Captain Janeway displayed several times that she had the ability to grant field commissions, which she does to the Maquis crew members, and also to both reduce somebody in rank, which she does to Lieutenant Tom Paris after the events of 30 days, and then restore that rank later on, which she does on the bridge in front of his mate, Harry Kim. At no point does she consider putting this young ensign up for a promotion, even though he has seen more in his time on Voyager than most other seasoned higher ranking officers have in their entire careers. 
He even dies on several occasions and it's barely even mentioned. Now this goes a little bit further because on top of the meanness of having poor Ensign Kim remain an Ensign for seven years, Admiral Janeway in the future changes history, erasing Captain Harry Kim from existence. Is there no end to this woman's cruelty? That's everything for our list today, guys. If you can think of any other dreadful evil actions that Captain Janeway has ever done, please drop them into the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Remember, guys, every time that you hit like or subscribe, you're directly helping this channel to grow and to bring you these lists like this. Now, let's just make sure that Captain Janeway never sees this list or I'm a dead man. I have been Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture. You are awesome. Live long and prosper. And let's agree to never tell Janeway about this.